All right, with this forecast video update on this Wednesday, December the 23rd, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you all had a wonderful Wednesday. It has been a pretty warm day across Central Florida. We saw mostly temperatures in the 70s for highs, but it's going to give it's going to get even more warmer as we head towards Christmas Eve before the big system rolls in by after sunset, which could bring us the possibility for even a few strong storms ahead of a much stronger cold front that's going to bring temperatures much cooler and even much chillier by Christmas Day, which I'll explain more about that here in just a little bit. But if we go ahead and take a look at the high temperatures here uh, in central Florida that we saw this afternoon, and as you can see, again, most of us saw mid-70s. So, for example, here in Orlando, we did, we did, hit, we did hit a high temperature today at about 75 degrees. Farther north to go into Sanford, it looks like you've uh, hit a high temperature at 72 76 was the high in the villages, and that goes for the same thing for you folks in Kissimmee and Lakeland. Uh, 74, 74 was the high temperature uh, in uh, Ocala. And farther, farther northeast you go. It looks like uh, temperatures only stayed in the 60s up around the Palm Coast area. But uh, other than that, it's been, it's been just a gorgeous day uh, here in the Sunshine State. But if we go ahead and take a look at our current temperatures right now in central Florida, uh, since the sun is down, temperatures are looking uh, a little bit uh, cooler out there. We got mostly in the mid 60s uh, in and around uh, Central Florida. So if you got any plans for uh, the rest of tonight, uh, just take a light jacket. But other than that, no big deal. But if we go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, Futurecast. I'm going to show you the timing of, of uh, who will see rain first by tomorrow night as a uh, squall line moves in ahead of the big front. And, re and remember, folks, if you're just uh, coming on into Facebook Live on this uh, Wednesday night, remember, don't forget to uh, go ahead as normal to share this feed to your other Facebook followers. Because remember, Mamado is sharing is caring. And uh, also, before we get started, I'm going I'm to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other pages. So... Hang on just a minute, and we'll start the timing of tomorrow night's uh, storms on Futurecast. <clears throat> All right, so here is Futurecast. So heading into the rest of tonight, at least overnight, as a matter of fact, looking dry as we stay mild. And then as we head into tomorrow morning, it looks like the Futurecast wants to point out maybe a couple of showers in some locations, especially if you live south in parts of Polk and Osceola counties, but other than that, looking dry with lots of sunshine throughout the day. But again, I can't rule out maybe a few showers. It'll, it'll just be a hit or miss type event, so just keep that in mind. But the big event looks to be, uh, again, after sunset tomorrow. So we'll call for about a 20% coverage of a few showers. Again, it'll be a hit or miss event as we head towards uh, tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, it'll be mostly sunny with, again, highs reaching into the upper 70s, but some could even hit, hit 80 uh, for the high tomorrow. But again, here comes that big squ uh, big squall line that will roll in again around 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. So we'll be entering uh, locations as west of I-75. So it looks like Western Marion County could get hit by some of that heavier rain along with these potential for a few strong storms. So that is uh, something we're going to be watching uh, closely. But it looks like it may not be until at least 8 or 9 o'clock we'll see the squall line push a little bit farther to the east. Uh, so it looks like anywhere from the western part of Orange County including right back over towards Disney to, let's see, a Celebration, Lakeland, perhaps all the way up towards Daytona Beach. It looks like you may get hit by the squall line as we head towards mid-evening tomorrow night. And then already passing through Orlando by around 10 as it moves over towards the east from to, uh, to New Smyrna to Edgewater, perhaps over towards the eastern part of Orange County, and back down over towards, uh, let's say, near the Lake Wales area. But the squall line may start to weekend just a little bit as we head towards between 9.30 and 10.00. Uh, tomorrow night, 
And again, that is ahead of a cold front, but it looks like behind the front, there's still going to be some showers around, basically, once you go back over towards Marion into perhaps parts of Sumter and Lake Counties. So, so just, so just, so just uh, keep that in mind. And then it looks like as we approach about midnight or so, it seems like the squall line will push off towards the far east coast of the state. And again, behind the front, that's going to, that's going to continue uh, to bring more showers, especially late tomorrow night into early Friday. So it looks like Santa may have to, uh, have, may, may need to have the rain gear as he flies into central Florida to deliver gifts. And of course, bundle up with that uh, coat because that's when the front will pass through. But the rain again will continue. So it may not be until at least once we wake up tomorrow morning, or not tomorrow, Christmas morning, I should say. Uh, so about around 7 o'clock, it looks like we'll see the rain push out of here, but except there could be some leftover showers farther east to go into parts of Osceola and Brevard counties. But it's going to be it's going to be a very cold start to the day on Christmas. But other than that, it looks like we'll wake up through lots of sunshine, and then we'll, we'll be pretty much we'll be pretty much uh, dry throughout the day on Christmas Day. So there you folks have it there. So how much rain we could see with these showers and storms here by late tomorrow night? Well, here's a look at the precipitation accumulation product on Featurecast. I'm going to show you how much uh, your location could see. And again, this will carry all the way through at least Friday night, or maybe I should say early Saturday, and it looks like most of us will pick up between just about a quarter to perhaps a half inch of rain, so I don't anticipate any flooding issues or anything, because we're not expecting, you know, any rainfall amounts to go higher, so that's some good news. But, since then we have a threat for some stronger storms tomorrow, uh, the SPC did put a risk of severe weather for most of Central Florida if we take a look at the Day 2 Outlook. And as you can see, everybody in dark green uh, is, uh, which indicates, by the way, uh, a marginal risk. So, yes, we are definitely under a marginal threat with the potential for a few isolated strong to severe storms by after sunset tomorrow. And that means with these storms, we could see maybe some gusty winds, maybe localized, uh, localized spots could see uh, winds, maybe excess, maybe close to 60 miles per hour. That could maybe issue a few isolated severe thunderstorm warnings. And I can even I cannot even roll out maybe a brief tornado or two. Maybe just a quick maybe just a quick spin up, but other than that, the tornado threat looks to be lower. So the highest threat for tornadoes tomorrow will be up and around the Carolinas, where the SPC earlier today has upgraded into an enhanced risk. So so this is still something we'll be watching closely. But other than that, the severe threat looks to be on the lower side ahead of the strong front. So there you folks have it there. And uh I bet most of you want to know how cold it's going to get uh, as the front passes through by late tomorrow night. Well, here's a look at the temperature part on Featurecast. Let me pinpoint the uh, temperatures location by location first. So here is future task yet again, but for the temperature part. So overnight tonight, again, we will stay a bit milder with lows in the upper 50s, especially once you go to the north and west of Orlando and others in the low to mid 60s. So looking uh, pretty okay. And then as we head into the afternoon, so again, during the day, we'll see temperatures again reach into the upper 70s, but we could even hit 80 for the high in Orlando by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, so it's going to be another nice day. So, like I said, hope you guys do enjoy another nice day, because like, like I said before, changes are coming by Christmas morning. But uh, as we head into 7 o'clock in the evening, it looks like we'll see temperatures again remain warm in the 70s. Once the squall line does come on through, or get closer, maybe I should say, and here's that front, that's going to really drop our temperatures from warm to cool after the squall line passes through. So it looks like it may be passing through the western part of our viewing area by around 9 or 10 so basically from, uh, let's say, Palm Coast back down towards the villages, Lakeland and Ocala, it seems like the front behind it will start to drop into the 50s. And then it looks like once it passes through Orlando and perhaps over towards the I-95 corridor by 10 and 11 o'clock late tomorrow night, it, uh, it looks like we'll see temperatures drop pretty quickly down into the 50s. But even, even if you go towards Ocala, it looks like temperatures are going to start dropping much chillier between 11 and midnight, down into the upper 40s. So, 
So you got to be prepared for that cold weather we'll be dealing with here for the next couple of days on Christmas and the day after Christmas. So as we get into uh, early Christmas morning, so as you wake up to as you wake up uh, Christmas morning on Friday. So if you're going to be up early, maybe wrapping up uh, presents. This is what this is what we're going to be uh, starting off with. So yes, we're talking about temperatures starting off into the low to perhaps even mid to upper 30s. So 30s for everybody across central Florida early Friday morning. So that means that we can see the possibility for a widespread frost and perhaps maybe a hard freeze here in the Sunshine State. So uh, if, you have, if you have any uh, tropical plants that you could, that uh, that could could be around your property, uh, remember that you, remember that beginning tomorrow night before the front has come on in, and of course along with the squall line. You may want to uh, bring them in, or perhaps cover them, cover them up with a blanket, because again, it's going to start. It's going to start off pretty cold Christmas morning. Because if you don't protect your tropical plants, that could really, uh, at least, the frost could kill your vegetation. So please, please be sure you do that before the frost hits early Friday morning. But if you're going to be up early, maybe doing some uh, exercise to start off Christmas, it looks like you're going to have to bundle up, because again, it's going to be getting down much colder. Uh, to start off uh, Christmas, and then after a cold start to the Christmas morning, as we continue on to the afternoon, if you're going to be out and about doing some, uh, I guess, fun activities with your small group of friends or families, it looks like we're not going to warm up that much. Right now, Futurecast points out that temperatures for some locations may not get out of the 40s. It's going to be really a very chilly day here in central Florida, because, again, that is going to be ahead of a strong front. Or, or maybe I should say there'll, there'll be a strong front coming through, so that's why. So in Ocala, by Friday afternoon, it looks like you may not get out of 47. You may not get out of 47 for the high temperature that day, and it looks like if you live in Titusville, perhaps the villages, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast, same thing for you folks. You may not get out of the upper 40s for high temperatures on Friday, and then once you go towards Orlando, Kissimmee, and, and Sanford. It looks like you may not get out of the 50 degree mark as we head towards that day, and even uh, Lakeland could even hit mid 50s. So please do layer up if you're going to be uh, out and about to maybe doing some uh, fun activities after wrapping up gifts uh, at home on Friday afternoon or by Friday afternoon. But if you're going to be uh, out and about maybe in the evening, like later in the evening on Christmas Day, so right after sunset, you're going to have to continue to have those coats and jackets later up because temperatures about 9 o'clock will start to drop into the 30s, especially if you live north. So it looks like uh, Ocala, perhaps the villages, Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, you can see mid to upper 30s for evening temperatures by 9 p.m. on Friday and others in the 40s. And then as we end the clock all the way towards after midnight, late Friday night and early Saturday, Again, it'll be another cold start with temperatures getting down into the 30s. So it's not just Friday morning, but another round of frost and a hard freeze could also happen early Saturday. So please be ready for the cold temperatures to come back to the Sunshine State. So there you have it there. And before we, before we get right to the uh, GFS, to take a look at what's going to be happening for the next couple of weeks as we uh, finish the rest of 2020 and kick off 2021, here's a look at the current radar. And as you can see, we are looking quiet. So like I said before, the rain will hold off until late tomorrow night. So if you got any plans for the rest of tonight, or perhaps throughout the day tomorrow, you're fine. All right, so here is the GFS. Let's, let's get into... Uh, the upcoming weekend, the day after Christmas, so after another cold start early Saturday, we will uh, again uh, we will again be a, we'll be we'll be seeing more dry weather with lots of sunshine Saturday afternoon. But if we take a look at our high temperatures, yet again we will not be warming up that much. So it's not just Christmas Day, but the day after is we're going to see temperatures remain cold and chilly with mostly upper 40s to low 50s. So if you're going to be uh, maybe spending a day, maybe spending a day at the attractions, for example. Please bundle up because it will not be feeling pretty. But if we take a look at the low temperatures for early Sunday morning, and the good news is, well, it's not really extremely good news, but there's a, maybe maybe I should say a little bit of good news. So there's a bit of good news for early Sunday morning as far as low temperatures go. It will not be as extremely cold like we're going to see early Friday and Saturday, 
But we'll still be chilly, though, as we start off in the 40s, below the mid-40s, as, as a matter of fact, for Central Florida early Sunday. But if you live in Ocala, it looks like you could start off again with maybe upper 30s. And there could be some patchy frost again to start off the morning on Sunday. But all the 30s and upper 20s will be farther north across the Panhandle and even into the, Miss into the Mississippi Valley region. And then after a chilly start to the day on Sunday... So by, by afternoon, it looks like we'll be drying out, but notice on the GFS that there could be a few isolated coastal showers basically along the coast of I-95, especially if you go south of the viewing area. But other than that, the rest of the state looks to be dry with loss of sunshine. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and here is a bit of good news. For those of you that do not like the cold, it looks like we'll transition from that to cooler weather. So that means that temperatures will get out of the 50s and get into the 60s. So low to mid 60s will be the high temperatures on Sunday. I mean, it's not it's not really a big warm up, but at least it's not going to be as cold and as chilly like we're going to see both on Friday and Saturday. But if you go farther south, it looks like temperatures may start to warm up a little bit more from upper 60s and maybe up to, into the low to mid 70s. So that's a bit better. But it looks like there's a very unlikely chance that we'll, that we may um, see like a 70 degree mark or so. I doubt it. But for the most part, I think we'll be, stuck, we'll be sticking with the 60s for highs by Sunday afternoon. All right, now as we head into early next week, so Monday, the 28th, and it looks like we'll see, again, most of us looking dry with lots of sunshine. But notice on the GFS that uh, there could be maybe a few possible isolated showers, mainly just along the coast of Volusia and Brevard County. So we'll cough about a 20% chance for a couple of coastal showers. But other than that, no big deal as we see more dry weather. And as we check in with our high temperatures, and it looks like we'll start to warm things up even a bit more. So, we'll, so it looks like we'll start to get back into the lower 70s for some places. So that's, so that's uh, not too bad. 70s are better. And then it looks like some others will stay mostly uh, in the upper 60s. So upper 60s and so low 70s will be our high temperatures by Monday of next week. So, so, so that, so that's a bit, so that's a, that's, you know, much better conditions than what we're going to see on Friday and maybe perhaps the weekend. But it looks like there might be another front that may try to swing it from the north to uh, south, but north of Florida. But behind the cold front up towards Alabama, maybe Mississippi and Georgia, temperature is going to start uh, dropping down to chilly conditions from 50s down into the 40s. And that could maybe, and that could maybe make its way into Florida, uh, possibly maybe by the middle of next week, which we'll, which we'll look at the uh, uh, next runs here now. So here's Tuesday. That's one. That's uh, one week. One week from uh, yesterday, and, and, and it seems like we'll see again just a couple of isolated coastal showers, mainly just along the coast of uh, Brevard County, mostly. But other than that, most of us will stay dry with with mostly sunny skies. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and yet again, we will stay mostly uh, perfect, with maybe some upper 60s, especially farther north you go into Marion County, and others maybe getting back into the low to perhaps even mid 70s. So looking. At least much better for almost all of us here by uh, the, by the 29th. So that, that'll be perfect for outdoor plans. So you can start breaking out those uh, short sleeve shirts and perhaps those shorts again by the time we get into early next week after a cold and a cooler uh, Christmas weekend. Now, here's a week from today. This is for our Wednesday the 30th, and it looks like, well, again, if you live right along the coast, there may be a few isol isolated coastal showers, but other than that, no big deal, as most of us stay dry with lots of uh, mostly sunny skies and uh, high temperatures below that. And as you can see, that will start to even warm up even a little more. So it looks like we'll transition from low 70s and back into the, into the mid 70s for high temperatures for almost everybody across central Florida on that day. So all the chilliness will stay farther up north, especially up towards Georgia, South Carolina, and up towards the Tennessee Valley regions, where they're expect, expecting these uh, temperatures to be in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So looking a whole lot better by next week. But it seems like another system may try to track into, or may move in, I should say, to central Florida by New Year's Eve, which is a week from tomorrow. 
and that could bring us maybe just some sh- maybe just some showers. We'll call for now across central Florida will remain just about a thirty percent coverage, but the highest chance of rain will be farther up north across the Panhandle and even across most of the interior Mississippi Valley region, and that and that's going to be ahead of another cold front also. And as we take a look at our high temperatures and ahead of it on New Year's Eve, we'll see temperatures again stay warm in the 70s. But once the front gets closer to the panhandle and across the Mississippi Valley region behind it, that's going to bring temperatures back down from cool to chilly with some 30s, 40s, and perhaps some lower 50s. So it looks like winter may return for much for most of the southeast except for our state by that uh, by that day. But it seems like behind... Uh, the second front that's going to move in by New Year's Eve. Here's, here's what we're expecting for the first day of 2021, especially for the morning of the first. And it looks like temperature is going to start dropping chilly from uh, mostly mostly from warm to chilly with mostly 40s. So we're, going to, so we're expecting low 40s for low temperatures early New Year's Day morning with maybe some upper 30s farther north you go into, let's say, Marion County, including the city of Ocala. But even far, even more farther north you go, it seems like temperatures may make it down even more colder, with maybe some upper twenties and maybe some lower thirties. So it could get, so it could get down below freezing uh, if you go towards the Mississippi Valley region as winter does make a comeback. And as we head into the rest of the day on New Year's Day, so after a little bit of a uh, wet end to 2020, it looks like we'll see most of the we'll see most of these uh, showers move out of Florida. And behind the cold front, it'll just stay cooler, which we'll look at the temperatures in just a minute. And I know you still see rain on the GFS for New Year's Day, but I think most of it will move out of here by uh, that day. So just keep that in mind. And of course, it could change, so we'll see. But look at, look, look at the high temperatures for New Year's Day, and it, and it seems like to kick off 2021, temperatures behind the second front are going to start dropping from warm to cool with uh, at least from 70s getting back down into the mid-50s, maybe upper 50s to near 60. So not a big warm-up, unfortunately, as we head towards uh, next Friday. But as we take a look at the low temperatures for the morning of next Saturday, and the good news is I don't see any 30s to start off, so that's a good sign. But it could start off chilly, though, with mostly some low to mid-40s across central Florida to start off the first Saturday of this month, or not this month, next month, I should say. But the cold, the cold snap is going to stay farther up north where temperatures can start off into the upper 20s and low to mid 30s across the Mississippi Valley region. So we're likely we don't have to do with any 30s here on, uh, on where we live as we head into early Saturday of next weekend. But after a chilly start, again, we'll stay dry with more in the way of sunshine. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and we'll start to warm up slightly, but still not looking at a big warm up, unfortunately. So we're going to stay mostly in the upper 50s, especially far in the north you go. Let's say, for example, in Ocala, but others will be back into the low to mid 60s. It's a little slightly warm, warm up, but mostly it's not going to be really warming up, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. So, so just, so just saying. But as we get into the land of voodoo country, this is taking you to uh, Sunday, January 3rd. And it seems like, again, we'll be staying dry in central Florida. So no rain or any or anything serious to happen uh, for now. So that's a good sign. So it looks like the first weekend of January looks to be okay. But for high temperatures, it looks like we'll stay, again, on the cooler note, but looking a, bit, a little bit warmer as we get back into the upper 60s and maybe lower 70s for some. So that's uh, so that's a little bit better, but not look. We're not looking. To, we're not looking at a big warm up uh, for the most part. But you know, since we're still about two weeks away to get to the first week of January, you know it could change. So, so just note that. But heading into the first Monday of January, which is the fourth, and it looks like we could see maybe a few isolated coastal showers to sneak back in across portions of Brevard County. But uh, other than that. I think we'll be staying dry with lots of sunshine here and the sunshine state. And as we check in with our high temperatures, and it looks like we'll stay cool in the 60s to near 70. But it looks like the highest chance to see mid-70s will be basically staying down towards the southern part of the state. But other than that, not too shabby. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right, here is Tuesday the 5th, and it looks like some more showers may try to may try to develop across portions of the viewing area, especially if it goes south and east of Orlando, but other places will be looking dry with mostly sunny. And uh, temperatures for highs looks to be uh, warming up just a little more, so some may hit upper 60s, and some could even hit back into the lower 70s as we approach that day. So, so it looks like it could be a cooler start to the new year uh, here in the Sunshine State. So uh, we'll see. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, here is two weeks from today. This is for Wednesday, the 6th of January, and it looks like some more rain could develop with a good chance, especially once you go farther south into southern Florida. But for us, the rain chances remain lower, which is about a 30% coverage. So you could see a 30% shot of a few showers, but... Uh, other than that, it's just no big deal as far as significant weather goes, but not as farther east you go, way off towards the east coast of Florida, it looks like could be some heaviest rain that could try to develop with a, with a disturbance near the Bahamas is what it seems like, but again, it's just too early to make a call because it's two weeks away, so it will likely change. And as we take a look at our high temperatures for the 6th, and, and it seems like for now we will be a slightly cooler, but some could even hit uh, maybe some 70s. Maybe lower 70s for some, especially if you live in parts of central Florida, but others could be mostly in the mid to upper 60s. Again, the biggest the biggest possibility to see 70s will be farther south into uh, southern Florida. Look at this here in Miami and over near Fort Lauderdale. It looks like temperatures may hit close to 80 for the high by that day. But if you go farther north across the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures may start to slightly warm up into the upper 50s and to perhaps low to mid 60s as well. And here is two weeks from tomorrow. This is for uh, Thursday, January 7th, and it looks like the bigger disturbance will stay out of the uh, state and will stay mostly on the east coast part, but off the coast of our state. But again, I can't rule out maybe a few isolated coastal showers, mainly just along the coast of Volusia and Brevard counties. But other than that, most of us will be dry with more of the way of mostly sunny skies and temperatures for highs looks to be, again, staying cool in the mid to upper 60s to near 70s, so don't see any big warm-ups for the first week of January is what it seems like, but again, we're in the land of voodoo country, so that's why that once we get close to the first week of the month, and of course for the new year, it could likely change, so again, I'm going to keep you all posted. And last but not least, just before we end this uh, update, this is Friday, January the 8th, and it seems like we'll be seeing lots of dry weather with more in the way of sunshine, but notice farther south you go, there could be maybe a few isolated coastal showers, mainly just along the coast of, uh, let's, let's say, from West Palm Beach down towards Miami and near the Keys, but other than that, no big deal. And temperatures for highs below, again, staying cooler, but some may warm up a little bit into the upper 60s to maybe even lower 70s for highs. But far, even farther north to go, temperatures could even stay uh, on the in the 60s category, especially from up towards Birmingham into Atlanta, Jackson, Mississippi. But if you go down towards Biloxi, it seems like temperatures may even hit 70 for the high temperatures. So that could be that could be nice uh, for these folks along the Mississippi Gulf Coast region. So there you all have it. All right, I'm going to wrap up this uh, Facebook Live feed on this uh, Wednesday night. So that's it for the forecast video update. And I'll be back I'll be back here tomorrow, especially between 8 and 8.30 as usual, Christmas Eve, for another live update on the weather for Central Florida. And I'll continue as always, which I've been saying this, I've been saying this many times here, but posting more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages 24-7. In the meantime, remember to take, remember to continue to take care of yourselves and each other, especially during this difficult time. And uh, just have a good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow. And uh, God bless you all.